Hi, I'm about to meet Ruslan Angelo for a fuck. Uh, but I overslept, and so we'll probably have like 15, 20 minutes. Um, I don't know if I'll come. I don't know if he'll come. I don't know if anyone will come. So uh, we'll, I guess we'll see. Stay tuned. Hey lovers, and welcome to Caden Unwrapped, a series where after every fuck scene, I tell you about all the ways you can protect yourself against STIs when you bear back, and even if you don't, because most of those STIs you can get even if you wear a condom. Of course, the porn part you're not gonna find on here, but you can find it in the description below. Previously, I talked to you about HIV and other viral STIs. Today, I'm gonna tell you about the ones caused by bacteria. And just like last time, I'm gonna tell you how you get them, what happens when you do get them, and how you would know that you have one. I'm gonna tell you how to get rid of them, and I'll spill some tea about my personal experience. We're gonna start with the most common bacterial STI, chlamydia, which you can get very easily through fucking, even if you use a condom, and through all kinds of other sex stuff, especially because even avid condom users don't use condoms for anything but fucking. And I mean, I get why. When you catch chlamydia, you may have a number of different symptoms depending on your gender, but like with most STIs, usually you wouldn't even know you have it unless you get tested for it. If you have chlamydia in your body for an extended period of time, eventually it may cause really serious complications, but otherwise it's fully curable and what you usually need to cure it is just one week of antibiotics. But there are some strains like LGV which take longer to cure and you can read up about that at the end of the video. To protect yourself, you can of course use condoms as long as you're aware that the protection they offer is limited. I have had chlamydia many, many times, usually in my throat. Don't know how it got there. Next up, gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is less common than chlamydia, but you can get it in all the same ways. There are even some studies that claim that you can get it through kissing. The symptoms of gonorrhea are also similar to chlamydia, except the discharge you may get from your genitals is uh, usually green or yellow, and there's lots of it, lots and lots, uh, which led to its nickname, the clap. Google it, it's fucking gross. But again, you may not have any symptoms, especially if you have a vag. If you leave gonorrhea untreated, it can cause lots of different problems, which is completely unnecessary because the infection itself is treatable with a single dose of antibiotic. Now that has however been changing in the recent years with the rise of gonorrhea, which has outsmarted so many of our antibiotics that they don't work on it anymore. Condoms give you the best chance in avoiding gonorrhea, but again, like with chlamydia, there is no guarantee. I've had gonorrhea a few times, and um, probably not as many times as chlamydia, and not for a while. And then we have syphilis. As it is with most bacterial STIs, syphilis is transmitted in a variety of um, sexual ways, including kissing. You get it through a direct contact with an infectious sore called the chunker, and people can have it in their mouths, or it can be on or in your dick, or your ass, or your pussy. And it's uh, usually completely painless, so again, most people wouldn't know that they've got syphilis. So the symptoms of syphilis can vary depending on which of its four stages the infection has reached. At the beginning, it tends to just be the chunker and sometimes a rash, and then as it progresses, lots of shit can go wrong, and, and it becomes really, really dangerous, which is why syphilis is the most stigmatized bacterial infection. Since the 1400s, it killed millions of people, and it still does kill people, which is actually really sad because we have antibiotics and you can fully treat and cure syphilis with antibiotics. A fun fact I discovered when I went to the Museum of Sex Work in Amsterdam. Syphilis is actually the reason why sex workers in the 19th century started using, or maybe even earlier, started using red light. And obviously red light has since become a global symbol of sex work, but originally it was used to hide, to conceal skin sores, which you get when you have advanced syphilis. Personal experience, I have had syphilis at least once, but I have actually been treated for it three times, just in case, as a contact. Not nice, but it's a small price to pay. I've left some information about these STIs at the end of the video, so you can read on a little bit more, and I included Shigella, because although it's not prevalent here in Europe, it is quite uh, popular in many other parts of the world, and it, it can be really severe. It's basically dysentery. I, I've actually had it a few years back, and it was one of the worst things I've ever gone through. 
As you can see, the only way you can really try to protect yourself against any of these bacterial STIs are condoms, and even they don't guarantee full protection against them. Fortunately though, these STIs are pretty much all fully curable. You just need to make sure that you take the entire course of antibiotics as prescribed, and of course make sure that you don't have sex while on treatment. And that is a wrap on bacterial STIs. Last time I mentioned window period, and just to remind you, it's the time between catching an STI and it being visible on a test. And this is super important because if you go and test before the window period is up, say you had sex with someone a week ago at the weekend and they told you they have chlamydia, and you go to get tested at that time, that's only a week and the window period for chlamydia is two weeks. And so you'll be told you're negative even though you're not. But don't confuse window periods with the time between catching an STI and getting symptoms because most of the time you won't have any symptoms. The most common symptom of any STI is no symptom at all. So what you gotta do? You gotta get tested. And we'll talk about that in the next episode of Caden Unwrapped. If you've missed any episodes, the playlist is in the description below where you can also find a link to full Caden Unwrapped videos. And if you want to know when the next episode is up, just subscribe and hit that bell for notifications and I'll see you soon.